family is under attack. My home is under attack. My people are under attack. The dramatic rise of incidents of violent anti-Semitism this past year is a direct attack on my family. The synagogue in Pittsburgh, the synagogue in Halle that you have mentioned, swastikas in cemeteries in the Ukraine, the BDS movement, the attacks on Jewish students on campuses across the United States and Europe. Here in France, again and again, Jews are attacked in the streets next to synagogues. In many cases, anti-Semitism comes up top-down from the leadership. Jeremy Corbyn in the UK is an anti-Semite of the old school. Erdogan in Turkey, an old-style anti-Semite. The Polish Holocaust law, which tries to erase the responsibility for what happened in Poland during the Holocaust, is intolerable. It's all part of the same thing. Anti-Semitism is here. I do not talk about the return of anti-Semitism because it never left. It, it just waited for the right time to rise again. Anti-Semitism thinks that this is its time. That's why we're here, to prove them wrong. The anti-Semites might be the same they always was and where, but the Jews are not. We won't stay silent. We've got no intention of trying to appease them. The great Jewish satirist, Ephraim Kishon, once wrote, the state of Israel wasn't founded so that anti-Semitism would end. It was founded so that we could tell them to shove it. An organization like Elnet was founded because Jews are done being silent. You're here, we're here together because Jews are done being afraid. We're not afraid of them, we'll be fight back. In the legal arena, in the press, if we need to use physical force, the state of Israel knows how to do that. If we need to target anti-Semite terror networks, the Mossad will be there. The anti-Semites say the Jews are different from us. That's why we're allowed to attack them. Too many Jews in too many places say, you are wrong, we're not different. All people are the same. It doesn't help because it isn't true. We are different. We have a different religion. We have a different culture. We're part of an ancient, and unique bonding. There is a covenant between us. We are proud of it. Loving your brother isn't a crime. Being different isn't a crime. We don't need to pretend we're not different. We need to fight for the principle that you don't discriminate against people because they are different, and you don't kill people because they are different. <laughs> The anti-Semites say the Jews think they're better than others, and we are meant, meant to feel uncomfortable and apologize. I refuse to apologize. The Jews aren't better than others, but there is no reason to ignore our contribution to humanity. Jews are 0.2% of the global population. There are more people living in the city of Jakarta than Jews in the entire world. And still, we gave the world the Torah, the New Testament, the theory of relativity, psychology. Nearly a quarter of all Nobel Prize winners and Enrico Macias. <laughs> French, French literature wouldn't be the same without Marcel Proust. American culture would be, look different without Steven Spielberg. The internet wouldn't be, very, wouldn't be the same without Mark Zuckerberg. Every Jew in this room had played the game of, did you know they are Jewish? 
Did you know Scarlett Johansson was Jewish? I swear to God. The biggest anti-Semitic project throughout history is to convince the world that anti-Semitism is the result of something the Jews did. That anti-Semitism is the result and there is a reason to justify it. Anti-Semitism never admits to what it really is. Xenophobia. What is xenophobia? It's the hatred of what you don't understand because you don't understand it. To hate those who are different because that's the only way evil people can love themselves. You look for someone to hate. You look for someone to blame for all your problems. You tell yourself that they threaten you so that you can justify your violence towards them. So that you can justify that you have hate and violence and death within you. If you need proof that anti-Semites are, anti are only looking for an excuse to hate Jews, look at how often throughout history they changed the excuse. The Spanish Inquisition tortured and killed Jews because we killed Jesus. Shakespeare, who never met a Jew in his life, wrote Shylock, the Jew who only loves money. The Nazis talked about racial purity. The blood libels blame Jews for paganism. The protocols of the elders of Zion claim Jews are trying to take over the world through the banks and media. The jihadis blame the Jews for sending the prophet Muhammad a poisoned lamp. When the excuse changes every time, you know it's a lie. It's always different, but really, it's always the same. They don't hate Jews for something the Jews did, but because of something within themselves, something evil, malicious, and ugly. In recent years, there is a new excuse. It's because of Israel, because of Israel's treatment of the Palestinians. It's because of their concern for human rights. They don't care about human rights. They're anti-Semites. They were silent while Assad murdered hundreds of thousands of his own people. They were silent when over four million people were killed in the civil war in Congo. They are silent when homosexuals are being hanged from cranes in Iran. They only start to shout when it comes to a democratic, law-abiding state which does everything in its power to protect human life. Why? Because it's the Jews. And they hate Jews. They don't really care about the fate of children in Gaza. If they cared, then they speak out against Hamas, which sends children to, the, to die on the fences. Against Islamic Jihad, which uses children as human shields for their crimes. There is only one reason they prefer blaming Israel instead of those really responsible for the tragic death of those poor children. They are anti-Semites. Israel angers them because we refuse to be the victim. That's the real grievance against Israel. We gave you a role, anti-Semites says, throughout history. You'll be the victims. They will try to kill you. Iran will openly proclaim it wants to destroy you. Terror organizations with advanced weapons will try to kill your children. If you try to defend yourself, we'll condemn you. How dare you defend yourselves? How dare you try to save your lives? Every time you do that, we'll gather the UN Human Rights Council to condemn, condemn you to make clear that you're not meant to protect yourselves when they try to kill you. We'll gather all the countries that are members of this grotesque council, Afghanistan and Angola, Bangladesh and Congo, Eritrea and Iraq, Rwanda and Somalia and South Africa. Each country that I just mentioned is responsible for the death, death of far more people than Israel for terrible horrors. 
Many are undemocratic, but they have an advantage. They're not Jews. They're not the ones anti-Semites. Anti-Semites always choose to blame. Sometimes you need to state the obvious. So I say it. Israel does everything in its power to avoid hurting innocents. Certainly children. Certainly. There are very few examples across the wars in history that the country made so much effort to avoid harming innocents on the other side. If Hamas stopped firing missiles on our children, the restrictions on Gaza would be lifted within 48 hours. Three times we have offered the Palestinians more than 90% of the territories and their own state. Three times they refused. If there wasn't a, pal a, parliament, a, a Palestinian terror, there wouldn't be a security fence. If all that happened, if there was a Palestinian state, if all the restrictions on Gaza were lifted, if the Jews and the Palestinians would live together in peace and harmony, the anti-Semites would find something else. They'd find some other reason to hate Jews, an old excuse or a new one. It doesn't matter. That's them. They're not trying to delegitimize Israel or its policies. They're trying to delegitimize the Jewish people. The very fact the Jews exist. There is no point trying to appease them. There is no point trying to prove to them that they are wrong. There are no facts in this debate. There never were. There is no fact they won't distort, no lie they won't spread. Our role is to fight the industry of lies. We won't change the anti-Semites, but we have the tools to fight back. If they raise their hand against the Jew, they need to know that, that other Jews might come and seek revenge. If they're planning a terror attack, to, attack against Jews, they need to know it's a death wish. Mostly, we need to tell our story better. That's where you come in. We need to fight together for the hearts and minds of billions of people. Those who don't know the facts. Those who were sold lies by the new anti-Semites. The silent majority. We need to explain to them that, 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 what, what is it that they're hearing. They're hearing the voices of hate. The BDS movement is the voice of hate. The voices of the anti-Israel protesters here in Paris or in London or in campuses on the United States are the voices of hate. Politicians who suggest boycotting Israel and supporting terror organizations like Hamas or Hezbollah are the voices of hate. I am no pacifist. I don't believe in fighting hate with love. You don't fight hate with love, but with organizational ability, clear messaging, with determination and strength. You fight it in television studios and on the battlefield. You fight it by telling the truth. It's not a political debate. It's not a debate about Israeli policy vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians. It's an ancient attempt to destroy a small and talented people that insist on maintaining their unique identity and their unique voice. We will continue to insist on our voice. We will continue to make it heard loud and clear everywhere. To say to the agents of hate, Jews will no longer be silent. Jews will no longer be afraid. Thank you very much.